Welcome to a special edition of Exhale. The next several episodes, we will be asking the respiratory therapists. This is a special series where we will interview multiple therapists, PFT technicians, and nurses in different healthcare situations during COVID this past year. We want them to share their experiences with you, what they've endured during this pandemic, and what they expect since it's not going away anytime soon. Your host is Mark Russell, Marketing and Communications Manager for Vitalgraph US, a global leader in respiratory diagnostics. To continue our special edition series, we're interviewing Dr. Sean Pridgen today. He is a nurse with the University of Missouri Healthcare, which includes four hospitals and 150 outpatient facilities. He has developed and implemented an evidence-based practice and nursing research program for this system. Also joining us is our own RT, Jansen Lanier, National Sales Manager for Vitalgraph US. So welcome, Sean. So is that correct? You are now a doctor. Yeah, I have a doctorate in nursing practice from the University of Missouri, Columbia, Sinclair School of Nursing. And specifically, it's in leadership and healthcare innovation. Okay, great. Why don't you tell us what your position now is at the university? So currently, I'm the coordinator of nursing research and evidence-based practice at MU Healthcare in Columbia, Missouri. With that, I'm just really charged with developing the spirit of inquiry in our nursing. Wonderful, wonderful, great. Well, we appreciate you coming on the podcast. As a nurse in the hospital setting, what was it like in COVID last year? Uh, could you give us a brief rundown of what happened? Last year, it's been pretty challenging for healthcare workers in a variety of settings, I would say across the world, not only here in mid-Missouri, but uh, nurses and hospitals have faced many challenges of both personal and professional fears to care for the patients in need during the pandemic. Hospital nursing is always about safety, and over the past year, our priorities have been on the safety of our patients, community, and staff. New knowledge and evidence related to COVID-19 and the pandemic surfaced quickly, and nurses caring for patients having to adapt quickly to evolving policies, procedures, and protocols. High volumes of patients combined with the need for social distancing and other safety precautions really strained us as nurses, both physically and emotionally. Emotional burdens not only impacted the caregivers in their personal and professional lives, and we really have had to learn how to be flexible and resilient to work, school, and home environments that are changing quickly to be successful. Thanks for that, Sean. I I do have a question I'd like to throw in there. With the ever-changing CDC guidelines, how has that been difficult for you in your capacity to change your daily routines? Yeah, it certainly presented a challenge needing to be adaptable. Not everything has been straightforward. And realistically, I don't think anybody was prepared for COVID-19 in this pandemic. I agree. But being able to be adaptable and resilient has really led us to be successful in caring for patients and ourselves. Otherwise, you're going to see a lot of people get burned out very quickly. Absolutely. We've seen it across the board. And so on some of your training, Has that help kicked in in certain ways with this COVID pandemic? Have you really utilized some skills that you hadn't used before? Yeah, I I have a wide and diverse background in nursing, whether that's from the military, being an Army Reserve nurse and nurse for the 932nd Board Surgical Team, to all of my training from being a CNA in high school, certified nurse's assistant, through my doctorate. So I feel like, you know, my training in different levels and different parts of my career have certainly helped me be adaptable during this time. So when I became a CNA in high school, it really helped me learn how to do those activities of daily living and help people really just have the basic cares that they need when they're unable to care for themselves. And then my training as an undergraduate, bachelor's of science in nursing, you know, helped me give me that basic knowledge and function as an RN. And then my training as graduate degrees helped as I've been able to become certified in bedside leadership and evidence-based practice. And I've been able to use that evidence to steer my practice as a nurse and the communication I use as a nursing leader. If you go and look at the military training I've had, it's helped me approach situations with methodological decision-making and given me different perspectives on how to provide care in primitive situations or austere environments. I think it's probably been really helpful for me in this scenario when we've been taxed and, and stretched beyond what we thought our capabilities were. Sure. What do you think what was the most difficult thing to learn during this process? Not only is time management key to, to working with these COVID patients, but also 
what are some of the procedures that were brought on that taught you something that will help you in the future? Accurate communication is extremely important. I agree. Uh, when you have uh, new knowledge that you need to get out to people effectively and quickly, you really have to be measured in the way that you deliver that. So making sure that you have a way to communicate with your bedside nursing force very quickly and effectively is really important. Absolutely. On top of that, taking time for yourself has been really important. I have seen nurses get really sucked into providing patient care and because uh, they weren't taking the time that they needed for themselves. Right, the mental health behind it. Yeah. I mean, you really put ourselves out there during this time, and you don't think about the mental health and awareness that the service person is doing, you know, whether it's the ambulance driver all the way to bedside nurses to doctors intubating. Mm -hmm. Definitely understand. So with your current role, could you guys give a brief rundown of your everyday duties? Yeah, so my current role, I really try to help facilitate evidence-based practice and nursing research projects throughout MU Healthcare. But really right now, because of the pandemic, I've been called, and so have other nurses throughout our system that are in professional roles that still possess clinical care skills, called back to the bedside. So one day I could be caring for patients, the next completing an evidence-based practice or nursing research project. You know, I could be working for the United States Army Reserves, and the next I could be sitting uh, with patients waiting for them to discharge to help with capacity issues that we might have. My main responsibility as a nurse, though, is uh, to ensure safe care of patients and be a leader and to ensure employees are also safe and supported. Really, when I completed my doctorate, my work was focused on resilience of nurses. I've spent time educating staff and leaders, as well as assisting in implementation of tactics to support our staff and leaders in developing resilience and ultimately lessen, lessening potential burnout or fatigue that has been impacting our healthcare workforce. In Missouri, we had a few months early in 2021 where we were seeing less impact of COVID-19. And though we remain diligent with our safety measures at MU Healthcare, now in Missouri, the COVID-19 pandemic is raging. And we again are experiencing a surge in patients who need our care. So I'm concerned for the well-being of all caregivers impacted as we continue to work very hard and emotionally and physically exhaustion those caring for patients during this time. So really, I feel like to continue to move forward in my role as evidence-based practice coordinator, I need to ensure that we have the latest access, access to the latest evidence-based practice measures for COVID-19, and we can continue to adapt to the new best practices and evidence. Our goal remains to keep our patients and staff safe, and we will continue to do that through adoption of evidence-based practices and new knowledge that's formed in order to be successful and support our communities. So what are your concerns about the new COVID variant? Well, we're on the Delta variant now, and I wouldn't be as concerned with it if everybody was vaccinated. Here in Missouri, only about 40% of our population is vaccinated, and that's attributing to our increase in COVID-19 cases at this time. So the Delta variant has been shown to be more contagious and virulent, according to the Centers for Disease Control. But with our mRNA vaccines being 90% effective at reducing infections, and that vaccination has protected people from serious infection, I really feel like we need to focus on getting vaccinated as opposed to the new variants. I've also seen that people that have been vaccinated haven't been as ill with the Delta variant. One example, here in Boone County, Missouri, where Columbia is at, all of the 125 people that were reinfected with COVID-19 had not pursued the vaccine in the meantime. Wow. So, and that's according to our county health department, showing that not getting vaccinated after COVID-19 wasn't a good idea. So the variants pose additional threats, but a lot less threats than those that don't get vaccinated. And how we're going to incentivize some of these people to do it. I mean, it's pretty clear evidence that some of these patients that weren't vaccinated, they're being uh, interviewed and they said it's all a hoax and they didn't think that the vaccination was effective. I know education is a key, but it seems like we're just on a constant battle trying to effectively get the truth out. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that. And it really takes healthcare workers, healthcare leaders, just to continue to, to be a resounding board for the metrics that are coming out. Really need to try to promote getting vaccinated. Yeah, it's a losing battle right now. Uh, hopefully we can you know, turn that around. Not, we're gonna go backwards in the, in the fight, so to speak. 
So, Sean, here in the Kansas City metro area, when COVID started, you had patients that refused to come in until it got severe. And by the yeah. time they came in, it was so severe, intubation was pretty much the only thing to do next. And the percentages of on, on intubation right out of the gate was if you were intubated, you were about 90% chance of not making it. Mm -hmm. um, did you feel in MIDMO that it was similar, similar cases, those with comorbidities that refused to come in until it just got so bad that those were the ones that really struggled once they got to the hospital? Yeah, I ha we did see that at the beginning of the pandemic. And I think in general, people have delayed routine medical care since the beginning of the pandemic for about 15 months now. Right. We have enough knowledge now to where we can safely care for both COVID-19 patients and regular patients. Sure. A large change that I've seen recently within our health system is that we used to cohort all of our COVID-19 patients in one area of the hospital. But now that we've had more time to prepare for a larger patient load, we have enough PPE throughout the hospital to where the patients can be spread throughout the hospital and really cared for the ailments that they have in their primary diagnosis. Sure. So have a patient that is positive with COVID but has had a heart attack, they're still able to get care in the cardiac intensive care unit now as opposed to the COVID unit. Yes, yeah, COVID unit, ICU unit, whatever it may be, you have a cart there ready to go. So being a little bit more prepared than uh, the first two waves, so to speak, on the reinfected patients that come back in, are they coming back earlier when they see the symptoms or is it just about the same? You know, I really don't have any statistics on that. Yeah. It's still too yeah, early in that. I still do see that, you know, I'm just relating to what I hear here in the Kansas City metro area is that uh, you're still getting the ones that are almost refusing to even get tested. And they're the, kind of the ones that are, you know, the ones that refuse to take this serious until it gets to a point where it's, if you don't get medical attention now, you're not going to make it. Unfortunately, that's the case. But I, I spoke to a doctor the other day, and he told me that December last year, normal hospitals weren't getting the gallbladders, the broken bones, the normal type everyday uh, ER visits. But now they're having those. And on top of that, you're having COVID patients. So that's really putting the burden on, uh, you know, ER in bed patients. Yeah. Our ER urgent care and quick care volumes have seen record numbers. Yeah, exactly. This summer. To handle the volume from the hospital, I'm sure. So at the University of Missouri, any patient that comes through either the critical care, urgent care, ER, are they having to be tested for COVID as they come in or is it a only symptomatic testing? So we're just now uh, restarting COVID-19 testing for admitted patients at sure. University okay. in New Healthcare. Yeah. And uh, that varies and changes according to our positivity rate in the local population. Sure. So we, we have a benchmark, and if we're over that benchmark, we go ahead and institute testing for everybody that's been admitted to the hospital sure. and pre-procedural testing. Can you give any other advice out to our um, listeners, maybe some of these medical professionals that are, are about the verge of burnout and such yeah. that they could you know, relate to them? Yeah, one of the strongest tools that I use daily is three good things. It's a positive reflection technique that I use on my walk out to my car when I'm walking out from work. And I just pick out three good things that happen during the day and really try to focus on those positive emotions that get solicited. That way I can hopefully go home and engage with my family and, and not bring work with me. And hopefully the next morning when I'm getting up and getting ready to work, I can remember those three good things and, and reset myself for the next day at hand. Perfect. Well, that, that's great advice. I appreciate that. And I'm sure our listeners should also. Well, great. I think we've covered quite a bit here, Sean. Is there anything else you'd like to mention? I'd just like to thank you for having me and hope that everybody can continue to be mindful of not only the importance of getting vaccinated, but also the importance of making sure we're taking care of our healthcare workers right now. Well, Sean, it's our pleasure to have you here on here, and we appreciate you sharing your experiences, and we thank you for being on. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, guys. You have been listening to Exhale with Vitalgraph. Your host is Mark Russell. We hope you enjoyed what you heard today. Please leave us a review and subscribe for new episodes. Thank you for listening, and we look forward to you joining us again on Exhale with Vitalgraph.